Fresh off the heels of the latest AMD AM5 X870 boards, Gigabyte's new Intel boards have arrived. The Z890 Aorus Master has been on my test bench for a few weeks and it's quite impressive. I've always enjoyed Gigabyte's products thanks to their feature-packed offerings without really breaking the bank. Often you can pick up an Aorus motherboard for $200 to $300 less than its competitor and they still get the job done. Of course, this new Z890 Aorus Master is built for Intel's new Core Ultra 200 series chips. This means it comes packed with the new LGA1851 socket. This new socket means you can't use any previous Intel chips on the board. That's because there are 151 new pins on this board which utilize most of the new Intel chips features. There's also new plastic nubs in different places which prevent you from inserting the wrong chip in the wrong board. As this is a new Intel board, it comes with the new CU DIMM RAM support that can be kitted out with up to 256GB of RAM. For this review, I will be using 48GB of Kingston Renegade DDR5 CU DIMM RAM across two 24GB sticks. I also have the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K CPU to test out. Intel's new Core Ultra 200 series also include PCIe advancements. The ability to use a Gen 5 SSD and a GPU at the same time is now possible on the board thanks to the 20 PCIe 5 lanes. Intel also says that the 151 pins on the socket aren't all active yet either, so we will likely see future chips support the socket and use those pins with new features. Then there's also AI for those who care about it. The new Intel Core Ultra 200 chips come with included NPUs for AI tasks. We've already seen this tech in Intel notebooks and now it's finally arrived on desktop PCs. Intel says that the new socket has improved dampening to prevent the bending of the chips over time. The company has put a pad on the hinge. You can see this by the white part underneath the socket. The company says that this extra white padding will lift a bit of stress and pressure from the chip when clamped down over time. Essentially, it plans to reduce the load and pressure on the chip. It is too early to tell if this is going to work, but let's hope for the best. The socket has also changed the holes around the chip. All LG A1700 coolers should fit just fine here, but if you use a contact frame, you won't be able to install it on this new board. That's because of not only the shifted holes, but also the new nub at the bottom of the socket that gets in the way. When you pick up the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master, you'll get the board in the box and some paperwork. Gigabyte has also included some additional connectors. There's two temperature sensor cables, a SATA cable, a Wi-Fi 7 antenna with an easy clip-on plug, and the G connector. Given that this is the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master, it is the top of the range board that you can get your hands on from Gigabyte. It comes with an 18 plus 1 plus 2 twin digital VRM design and all the heat sinks you can ask for to keep the board and CPU area cool. This board is powered by a 24 pin ATX connector and two 8 pin CPU connectors. The board doesn't have the extra 8 pin connector we have seen on other brands motherboards. This is likely due to the VRM design. It comes with two PCIe 5.0 M.2 slots and three PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots. Then there's one PCIe 5X16 slot, one PCIe 4X4 slot and one PCIe 4X1 slot. Headers here include two USB Type-C 3.2, one CPU fan header, one CPU water cooling pump header, four system fan headers, four water cooling pump headers, four ARGB Gen 2 LED headers, and one RGB LED strip header. Of course, you'll also get the standard front case headers, two temperature sensors, and an internal HDMI port on the inside of the board. This port is designed for internal sensor panels. Storage-wise, there are four SATA 6 gigabits per second connectors and five M.2 slots. The back I.O. then comes with the Q Flash Plus button, clear CMOS button, two Thunderbolt 5 connectors, six USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, an RJ45 port, the Wi-Fi 7 antenna connector, two gold-plated audio jacks, and one optical SPDIF out port. The Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master is a stylish board. It is the master brand and it boasts some clean aesthetics. The heatsink have a sleek silver tone to them. The bottom M.2 heatsink is mirror coated and even has a metal Aorus slab on the corner. The M.2 slot has a massive heatsink on it too. It is chiseled off to the side and looks like a chipped metal. 
Both of these cool looking heat sinks are toolless and can be removed by simply unclipping one end and pulling the slab out. They clip back quite easily too. Of course there's also the PCIe quick latch which is a staple now. The RGB on this board includes lights on the IO shield and lights under the M.2 heatsink. You can actually see these on the board when the heatsink is removed. The RAM slots also have a new look to them. Two of the slots are coated in metal making it easier to distinguish the channels. Speaking of which, Gigabyte did a great job making every header and component on this board clear thanks to its bold labels and clear text. I usually know where all these ports are and what they do, but the labeling is the best I've seen on a board to date. Some headers even include the name and the speed of the port. I wasted no time setting up the board on my test bench. I plugged in all the fans, attached the cooler, installed the RAM, put in my SSD and booted it up. There was an updated BIOS available for this review. I recommend you always set up the board with your BIOS files readily available on a USB drive. It helps with the performance and errors that you might encounter across a wide range of reasons. I then installed Windows 11, updated the platform, installed the Gigabyte Control Center, updated that too, and made sure everything was as up to date as possible. For these benchmarks, my test bench included the following components. Of course I wanted to test out the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K on this board. This is the chip Gigabyte sent with the board for testing. I also wanted to test out the kit with and without overclocking tweaks. Gigabyte then has a new overclocking platform called the Aorus AR Snatch. It is a one click accelerator that enhances your CPU and DDR5 performance. The brand says you can easily get 7% higher speeds than with the setting off and up to 20% more AR performance. Essentially this setting turns your BIOS tweaks from easy to peak. The the tool also has a safe overclocking protection system that protects against overclocking over voltage and short circuits. I enabled it all and ran my tests as well as benchmarked the Kingston Renegade DDR5 RAM. Power use during these untweaked benchmarks reached 225 watts during the CPU-Z stress test. The maximum temperature then peaked at 84 degrees Celsius on the CPU sensor and 57 degrees Celsius around the VRM. The board remained fairly cool at 42 degrees Celsius. Efficiency cores maxed out at 5.7 GHz but dropped down to 4.8 GHz and out at around that mark when temperatures peaked over 75 degrees Celsius. 4.8 GHz seems to be the safe spot for thermals and out of the box performance. The AR overclocking helped improve the score slightly but when I tweaked the CPU in the Intel Extreme Tuning I saw an even bigger difference. I upped the performance core ratio by 3 notches to 57 and the efficiency by 2 to 47. This boosted the average efficiency core speed to 4.99 GHz from 4.8. The CPU did hit 92 degrees Celsius and the power was increased to 270 watts. This was a subtle overclock to be honest but it does show the potential on offer when pushing the CPU even further. With this overclock enabled the board still remained at 54 degrees Celsius on the VRM which is also quite impressive. Testing out the RAM was also interesting. The new 8800 MTS RAM definitely lives up to its speed. Once I enabled the expo mode in the BIOS, I was able to reach the full 4400 MHz on these RAM sticks, which is the full 8800 megatransfers per second. Of course, this RAM offers even more room for overclocking and performance tweaks. There's also larger, faster sticks in the works, which will be available next year. The Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master is a great board that performed exceptionally well. Throughout the test it held up across heat and speeds. The easy overclocking features also provided quick ways to toggle more performance on the CPU and RAM. The big draw however is the performance of the CPU. The Intel Core Ultra 9 does come with improved thermals. Out of the box, the chip sat comfortably at 85 degrees Celsius. This is compared to the 14th gen chips that peaked at 100 degrees Celsius most of the time. This is impressive. Even more so if you take into consideration the performance here. Sure, 220 watts is a lot of power, so you're not getting magical performance here powered by unicorn farts. The chip gets hot and eats a lot of power. However, compared to previous chips, Intel has actually improved thermals and performance. Even overclocking resulted in mid-90 degrees Celsius with a substantial boost in scores. Again, this used 270 watts of power, so there is an obvious trade-off. 
Ram-wise, these fast sticks are also great to see. The CU DIM RAM provided improved speeds across the board, easy overclock methods, and of course, larger sticks. I think we'll reach a ridiculous mark in RAM speeds over the next year, with sticks that provide speeds no one actually really needs. But the tech is here, and it's great to see. Of course, all of this does come at higher costs, higher temperatures, and higher power use compared to AMD. So you'll need to keep that in mind, weigh up what performance you're looking at and whether the trade-offs are worth it. So those are my thoughts on the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master. Are you looking to pick this board up? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, also drop them down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. While you're here, please do consider liking and subscribing for future content like this and visit Glitch.online for more gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.